Thermoregulation is the control of our body temperature. So when our body temperature becomes too high, we can sweat. And when our body temperature becomes too low, we can shiver. So how does sweating and shivering work? When we sweat, we release water, which covers the skin. Heat energy from the body is transferred to this water and when it has enough of that energy, it can evaporate. So turn into water vapor and leave the skin. As it evaporates, it takes the heat energy with it, which lowers the average temperature of the body. We shiver when we are too cold and muscles will start to contract automatically, which makes us shiver. So the muscles are contracting really fast. This process requires energy, which is generated through respiration. This chemical reaction in respiration produces heat. So when we shiver, energy is generated and through respiration and heat is produced and this warms us up. So when we are too cold, muscles start to contract automatically, making us shiver. This process requires energy, which is generated through respiration. For example, a man might have a good body temperature, it's 37 degrees C, because it's cold outside, but he's kept a jacket on, which has kept him warm, so he's not too hot. Not too cold, sorry. Each hair on our body is controlled by a hair erector muscle. So every single, mus every single hair has a separate little muscle attached to it. When we are too cold, the hair erector muscles will contract causing the hair to stand on end, and this pulls, the, pulls on the skin so you get goosebumps. When all the hairs are standing on end, they can trap an insulating layer of air. Too hot, the hair erector muscles relax, and this causes the hairs to lie fat, flat on the skin. So there are two different ways which the hair erector muscles can react in thermoregulation. And those are that they can either relax or they can contract. So for, let's think about if there was a man who was really hairy, he's gonna keep himself warm more easily because lots more air can be trapped against the surface of his skin. Another response to cool up or heat up our body is with the blood vessels. Blood vessels deep in the skin have layers of smooth muscle tissue in their walls. They respond differently when we are too hot or too cold. If we are too cold, the muscle, muscular walls will contract, and this is called vasoconstriction. This reduces the blood flow to the skin surface and heat energy is kept inside the body. If you are too hot, then the muscular walls relax, and this is called vasodilation. This allows more blood to enter and flow through capillaries close to the skin surface. The excess heat energy is then transferred to the surroundings. So what happens during vasodilation? So the muscles will relax, and this can happen when we are too hot, and this will increase blood flow to the surface of the skin, so more heat is lost. So a mechanism when we're hot, can you remember any of them? One of those is to sweat. Sweat glands release water. Heat energy from the body is transferred to this water. As the water evaporates, it takes heat energy with it, lowering the average temperature of the body. Let's have a recap. So hair erector muscles control the hairs on the surface of our, of our skin. The possible reactions of those are to relax, which causes the hairs to lie flat when they're too hot, or they can contract when we are too cold, causing them to stand on end. So one example we can have, which isn't humans, is ducks. Ducks lose heat from their feet when they're in cold water. So they have evolved to decrease the blood flow in their feet. The blood is also cooled so that less heat is lost to the cold water when it reaches the duck's feet. So the ducks have less blood vessels in their feet, which means that 
There's less blood flowing through there, so there's less surface area for heat to be lost. So they are they keep themselves warm, and the, the heat energy is not transferred. Let's go back to basics. What is thermoregulation? Different processes take place in our body to control body temperature when it's too hot or too cold. When we're too cold, we might shiver. The muscles can contract automatically, making us shiver. When we're too hot, the body's sweat glands release water, which covers the skin. When we shiver, this process requires energy, and this is through the process of respiration. Respiration results in heat production, which warms us up. When we sweat, the heat energy from the body is transferred to the water produced by sweat glands, and when it has enough energy, it evaporates. As the water evaporates, it takes heat energy with it, the temperature of the body.